friends. Thanks for tuning in to watch another Burnt River Ranch video. So this video is going to be in a little bit of a negative light, I guess. There's no fancy sugar coating it. It is kind of a, a video where I need to be a little bit honest with you guys and talk about some stuff in regards to breeding livestock guardian dogs and finding good homes for the puppies. Yeah, I've been struggling a little bit and I need to rant, I guess. I find the hardest part of my job is probably dealing with people. There are some really amazing humans out there that I have gotten the opportunity to meet through our farm and all the things that we sell that I probably would not have got to meet otherwise. And that is wonderful. However, I've also gotten to meet some very interesting folks of the world that rub me the wrong way and stress me out. Breeding dogs and selling puppies has introduced me to some of the most interesting and frustrating people I have ever come across. My husband always, always makes this joke that if you have horses and you don't have cows, you're probably nuts. But if you have horses and you have cows, then you have a little bit more of a touch of reality. But let me tell you, horse people got nothing on dog people. Dog people are, they are a whole new breed of wild. Some of them can be a whole new level of crazy. And I have been so blessed to be in touch with those people. Let me just give you guys a rundown of what it's been like selling puppies and what it's been like breeding dogs and why I'm seriously questioning if I'm ever gonna do this again. So as you know, we have Livestock Guardian Dogs. We breed registered Sharp Planinats dogs, which is a breed of Livestock Guardian Dog from Macedonia. And if you look back on our earlier videos, you can get a little bit of an idea of what kind of dogs we have, what they're used for. We've had a whole host of things that have happened prior to us breeding our dogs. We've done a ton of health testing. We've done OFA x-rays. We've done genetic testing on our breeding pair. Before we even got our breeding pair, we searched high and low, did tons of research on which lines we wanted to get, and we made sure that we got really good lines that were not related to each other. They have a low coefficient of inbreeding. And we made sure that both of these dogs were proven working dogs on our farm. And they were good guardian dogs with good temperaments for what we needed them to do here before we ever, ever thought about breeding them. So we made sure that we did our due diligence and they passed all of their checks before we ever thought about breeding them. Because our main goal, obviously, if we're going to be breeding puppies, is we want to have dogs that are going to serve a purpose, that are purpose-bred dogs that have a job to do, and they're going to be set up in the best way possible to have success at that job and have longevity and functionality and be healthy in the future. So we wanted to make sure that we did all of that before we ever thought about breeding dogs. And we finally, after years and years, got to the point where we were ready to breed dogs and we had lots of people on our wait list. I would say 85% of those people ended up changing their mind once we actually had puppies or just ghosting us completely, or they'd speak for a puppy and then decide basically last minute that they couldn't afford it or they didn't want it or they changed their mind or they bought some mutt off Kijiji for cheaper because they didn't wanna pay what we were asking for our dogs, which mind you, we are asking way less than what we paid for both of our dogs when we bought them and way less than what most of the breeders in Canada are asking and the US. So honestly, I thought for our litter of puppies, we were being really quite reasonable. Well, let's just get into it, okay? Let's just get into the whole puppy buyers thing because that's really what I'm ranting about today. First things first is the price point, like I said, is a sticking point. Um, all of our prices are listed on our website, so it's not a surprise that in itself has been troublesome to get people to actually go and look at the website. I had a lady harassing me literally with all of these demands and all of these requests that she needed the puppies to have basically checked off. But, you know, she would send me novels, paragraphs, but could not be bothered 
to look at the website, which had all of the answers to her questions, and literally most of her requests that she had, we do that anyway, but she just could not be bothered to look at our website, and she kind of just sat up on her high horse and talked at me about all the things that she needed to be done. It was super weird. So, yeah, that person was one of the people I ended up having to block, and... <laughs> She had told me, nobody's getting back to me. Nobody else is getting back to me. Well, sorry to say, but maybe take a look in the mirror. Because sounds like you're the problem, not the whole entire list of breeders that you've contacted. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so yeah, price is a sticking point. Um, it's expensive to get a purebred dog. Um, people are a little out of touch with reality, I think. For me to go and buy my breeding pair, I paid upwards of $1,500 to two grand for them to have a breeding pair of good registered dogs with breeding rights. And then we had to grow them up, feed them until they were two years old because they have to be 24 months of age to be able to get OFA, Orthopedic Foundation for Animals, x-rays. So we did that, we got the x-rays done. Um, if you've ever taken your animal to the vet, you'll know that getting x-rays and doing any kind of vet work on any of your animals is expensive. So we've got that cost figured in. Then we've got the, the cost of doing genetic testing in there as well. And this probably doesn't always happen, but in our case, our female, she is a livestock guardian dog. She decided to go after a bear a week before she whelped puppies. So huge vet bill there. Um, we almost lost her. She had a hard time giving birth, um, having her babies. They were super weak. She wasn't a very good mom in the first few days and she had a lot of blood loss. She had to have surgery, so she was weak. She was a little bit out of it. She had a lot of trauma, so it was just a lot going on for her. So we had that vet bill stuck in there. And then just the management of keeping intact dogs is a lot. To keep your dogs separate until you want to breed is a whole host of things that you have to worry about. Um, obviously, hormones are very strong urges for dogs, and they'll do almost anything to get to each other. We've had dog fights between our male and our neutered male. So, vet bills there. And, yeah, it's just all of these little things that people don't seem to think about when they're getting a puppy. They really just... They worry so much about the price, but they don't really realize that we have so much money into these dogs. And even at the price that we're charging, which seems high to a lot of people, but to me it doesn't. Considering what we've paid for our dogs and all the money we have into them. Yeah, it seems high to them, but they don't realize what we've put in and that we are not making money on these dogs. Honestly, we're not. We're making nothing. In fact, we're losing money significantly on these puppies. Um, livestock guardian dogs is a whole new thing that is not like buying just any old regular puppy. They're not a pet. Like I said, they're a purpose-bred working dog. They are bred with certain traits in mind, certain qualities that make them really, really good at their job and make them probably less than stellar to be like your buddy, family, pet that you want to be friendly with all these people that come over. So I'll get people that say, I want a livestock guardian dog. I don't want it to bark. I don't want it to wander. I don't want it to fight with all these dogs and all of these critters that I have my friends bring over. I'm going to have all these random people over and I don't want them to be mean to these people and I want them to be super friendly like a golden retriever. But, but, if someone I don't know comes over, or a dog that I don't know comes over, or some kind of threat comes, I want them to go after that threat, and I want them to be really aggressive. It doesn't work that way. That's not how it works. You cannot have both. The dog cannot differentiate between what is a threat and what isn't. They just know that stranger danger, they are not supposed to be okay with people that they don't know, or animals that they don't know. So you can't expect them to do both. They can't read your mind. They are bred to be wary of strangers. They are bred to expand their territory. They don't know that your neighbor across 
the street from you or across the road or heck two miles away they can wander for a long distance they don't know that that's not their territory how do they know what is a man-made property line they have no idea and people say oh i'll just walk the boundary line with them no it doesn't work with livestock guardian dogs okay they just think oh cool we seem to be going for a really cool long walk around the same area every day that's fun they don't know that that means you're supposed to stay in the boundary line they have no idea so i always tell people if you're going to get a livestock guardian dog you better have good fencing you better have a way to keep them contained i don't know geo fences perimeter collars that's what we use satellite perimeter collars on our dogs because it's just not feasible with the type of farm that we have and the type of landscape that we have to fence every part of it but you've got to have some way to keep your dog home i cannot guarantee that a puppy it's a puppy i can't make guarantees that it's not going to wander that it's not going to bark when you don't want it to bark that it's going to be best friends with your friend's dog, but not some other person's dog that wasn't invited on their property. How's the dog supposed to know that? It doesn't make sense to me, okay? People have these, these demands and they're super, super like adamant about them. And yet they don't know what a sharp plan and that's even is. Why is it so hard for people to do a little bit of research? Why don't you spend some time looking up blogs, there's some really great blogs, going on some really great Facebook pages and asking some questions and talking to some breeders. And instead of just going straight to, I wanna buy one of your dogs, but here's all my demands. Why don't you research what a livestock guardian dog is first and then see if that's even right for your family. I have a video earlier on my Facebook or on my YouTube channel that goes into, is a livestock guardian dog right for me? Or right for our farm. I forget exactly what the title is, but it's up there. Go give that a watch if you're considering adding a livestock guardian dog to your farm or your acreage. And just see if, you know, maybe even having a livestock guardian dog is right for me or not. Because in some cases, I would say that it's probably better for you not to have one. And make do with other ways of protecting your stock. But sometimes they are a good option. But you need to set yourself up and you set these puppies up for success. People seem to forget that they are puppies, okay? They are puppies, just like every other dog is a puppy. They still go through that adolescent stage where they have bad behaviors and they're testing boundaries and they're testing you and they're not behaving and they're seeing what they can get away with, okay? Just like every other puppy, they do that. You are still having to be there to give them corrections and supervision. They're not unicorns. People seem to think that they are just, they're born perfect right out of the gate, throw them at the livestock, end of story, I don't have to worry about anything anymore. That's not the case. Yes, they have amazing instincts. They are bred to be amazing guardian dogs. We have, as breeders, set them up to be the best that we can get them to be with good lines, good working dog parents, and making sure that they are set up for success health-wise, longevity-wise, function-wise possible. But when they leave our hands and go to your farm, they are now your dog. You have responsibilities there. They are not perfect. They're going to need some supervision, some corrections. Some dogs are better than others. Some dogs don't need as many corrections and are just... A little less work than others but as a general rule livestock guardian dogs tend to be quite stubborn hard to train and have a mind of their own which is a good thing too right for a livestock guardian dog to be able to have a mind of their own when they're going after threats coyotes bears wolves whatever it may be they have to have some intelligence of their own to be able to keep themselves safe and keep their charges safe. However, it also means that in the same sentence, they are going to be trouble in other ways. And it's up to you to realize that and not just say, oh, this dog's a piece of trash. He doesn't do what I want him to do. Did you really set him up for success? 
Did you research what a livestock guardian dog breed is and what they're meant to do? And then on another note, did you research this actual breed, Sharplaninats? I will just say there's kind of a range of livestock guardian dogs, okay? There's things like a Great Pyrenees over here and Maremmas and stuff like that. And then you go to the other side of the scale where you have Sharplaninats and Caucasian Obcharkas and stuff like that. They are on completely different opposite ends of the scale in terms of people friendliness and being wary of strangers and aggression and courage. Our breed of dog that we raise is probably on the far end compared to a Great Pyrenees of people friendliness. Our male is quite friendly, but I don't trust any of our livestock guardian dogs around people we don't know. They just are bred to be a stronger dog. That's just who they are. So I've had people tell me that they want to have one of our dogs as their emotional support dog. What? No. No. Like, not this breed. This is not the breed for you to be using as your therapy, as your therapy dog. Why don't you go get, like, a golden retriever or something mellow? Not this breed. Just because you thought they were cute, fuzzy, adorable little puppies does not mean they're going to grow up to be sweet and delightful dogs. They are amazing dogs for what they're bred for, but they are not an emotional support dog. As a breeder, I am here for our puppy buyers to give you all the support that I can give you over the course of your dog's life that you get from us. And there are some really amazing other mentors that you can find on different Livestock Guardian Dog Facebook groups or just some amazing blogs out there. There's so much information that you can be reading about Livestock Guardian Dogs. Everyone, if you're really honestly willing to try and you have a desire to make your dog work for you, there's people out there that are going to help you. We want to see you succeed. We don't want you to fail, but you also have to play a part in that. You cannot blame all of the bad things on the dog. Then we get random people that want to buy our dog for cheap and they ask if they can breed it to their female or breed it to their male eventually or they want to use it for breeding and whatever. They just want to use it for breeding. And all of our puppies come with a spay and neuter contract, not because they're not breeding quality, but because I just don't really think that most people have the preservation of the breed in mind when they come to breeding puppies. They honestly just want to make a quick buck. And that's not what I'm about. That's not why we started breeding dogs. It wasn't to make a quick buck, that's for sure. It's because I really love this breed. I am passionate about making sure that these dogs end up in the right hands. I'm passionate about educating our puppy buyers and people that have livestock guardian dogs in general, even if they don't buy from us, even if they have a different breed. I'm just passionate about this breed in general and I know that with all the work and all the money that we've put into our dogs and all the management that we've had to do to, to keep intact dogs, this is not for everyone. Not everyone should be doing this and that's okay. Not everyone has the resources to put all that you need to into breeding good dogs and being a truly ethical, responsible breeder and that's okay. Those people should be buying from the ethical breeders, not trying to become one themselves. I think if you want to go that route, you need to be super passionate about this because it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money. It's a huge financial burden and you don't make money off puppies. After you get all that you've put into your adult dogs and now you have to have the puppies and they have to have their shots and their deworming and vet exams and registration fees and blah 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 the list goes on there's no world in which you're making money um with being an ethical breeder i know that a lot of people that have contacted us that complain about the price will be going on kijiji or facebook or wherever they can find some type of livestock guardian dog breed even if they're mixed with like a coli or herding dog, or something that's not even remotely a livestock guardian dog. And it's unfortunately, sorry to say it, it's those people that a year or two from now are going to be complaining about all the problems that they're having with their dog 
and they're going to be on all these Facebook groups looking to rehome said dog because it's the dog's fault that they're not working out when this person did not set themselves or that dog up for success. Anyways, that's my rant for the day. Sorry for being negative, but it is what it is. I feel like I'm always having to explain myself. Hopefully, this strongly voiced opinion of mine slash fact will help somebody or help somebody make the right decision for their farm and their family and their acreage or whatever they have going on. Because I think it's important.